Greetings, Mill Creek Minnow here. As advertised in my X Caddis video, today I'm going to show you how I tie my Extreme Caddis. It's similar to an X Caddis, but it's a little over the top. It's like X Caddis goes to Hollywood. I use a lot of the same material. I still use a poly yarn for a trailing shuck. For my body material, I'm going to use a tan D rib. I'm going to use tan dubbing for my thorax. I'm going to incorporate some small rubber legs. And I'm also going to use deer hair for my wing. Now this is a really effective searching pattern. If there isn't a strong hatch coming off, I like to fish this in a two fly setup. And I'll run like a soft tackle or a caddis pupa dropper. And I've had a lot of success that way. Uh, got a beer handy right here and I'm ready to get started. Okay, I've already got a size 12 light wire curb shank hook in the vise. I'm going to come in behind the eye with a 6 aught tan thread. I'm just going to wrap it back and secure it. Trim off the excess and I'm going to tie in my tan poly trailing shuck. Again, this is to imitate the adult caddis hatching out of its previous self, the caddis pupa. So this trailing shuck is the remains of what it used to be. Wrap that back. I'm going to bring it all the way forward. Trim this out of the way. I'm going to build up a little bit of a taper with my thread. Not too extreme. Now you want to trim off the trailing shuck to about the length of your body. And a nice little trick to do that is just to pull it forward, trim it out. So now I'm going to tie in the tan D-rib. We call it D-rib because it's flat on one side, round on the other, giving it a D profile. And when I tie this in, I, I tie the flat spot facing me. Wrap that all the way back. And I'm going to bring the D-rib forward in nice even wraps, laying them right down next to each other. If you want a slightly darker body, you can just switch to a darker thread. This, this uh, D-rib is see-through. Just going to secure that. I'm going to twist on a little bit of tan dubbing. And my body is just a hair long, so I'm actually going to wrap this dubbing backwards to start my thorax back a little bit. Readjusting the vise a little. I'm going to trim off my first clump of deer hair. Tease out all the uneven fibers, all the under fur. Drop it in my hair stacker. Give my bobbin a spin to tighten up my thread. Okay, so when I tie this in, I want my wing to be just slightly longer than my body. Got a couple fibers in here upside down that are driving me nuts. Tie it in just slightly longer than the body. So I'm going to catch it with a wrap around the material, the deer hair. Catch it all in a bunch so that it doesn't roll over on me. And then make a wrap around the shank of the hook and tighten up. Give it a couple more tight ones. Bring up about half of it and wrap underneath. 
and I'm going to bring my thread forward to right behind the eye. Bring all those stub ends forward. Catch them in a tight wrap. And then wrap my way back. Tighten up everything. I was about to tell you this was the perfect time to stop and take a drink and realize the cap was still on my beer. Almost lost a tooth. Drinking a Pale Ale by Deschutes Brewery, Mirror Pond. Now I'm going to twist on a little bit more tan dubbing. Just to be safe, I'll probably... There we go. I always play it safe. I'm going to build up my thorax a little bit. And I'm going to come right in the middle. I'm going to tie in some rubber legs. I tie these in long so that I can pull them back and get them out of my way. can't tell you how many times I've finished this fly and have gone to trim the deer hair and clip one of my wings off and end up with an amputee. I'll bring my thread forward. And to tie these out of the way, I just take, I pull them all back, and I have some 10 gauge lead wire. I'm going to slide that around the hook, capture those legs, give it a twist like a bread tie. And I'll just keep everything out of my way for now. Now I'm going to take one more clump of deer hair. equal to the first one. I'm going to clean it up. Drop it in my stacker. Give my bobbin a spin, tighten my thread up. Now when I lay this down, I want it to be just as long as my first wing was. That looks good. I still want to catch it in a bunch, and this is a little difficult. you got to kind of do it off to the side. And then bring it down. That looks good. Catch a couple tight wraps. Pull some of this material back. Pull it all back. Just give it one or two good wraps, maybe three. Now I'm going to whip finish. Trim my thread off. And I'm going to pull all of these stub ends forward. I'm going to trim them off. Make a nice head. And when I said this made a nice searching pattern, this second wing helps keep this thing dry. It'll float like a cork. It'll even hold up a small pheasant tail, beadhead pheasant tail nymph for a dropper fly. I'll let these legs free. I'm going to trim them down to about three-eighths of an inch. And that 
is the X Caddis goes to Hollywood, the Extreme Caddis. If you come back and check out my next video, I'll show you how I tie those dropper patterns. I'm going to tie a soft tackle, I'm going to tie a caddis pupa, and then I'm going to tie a pheasant tail.